Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today <laughs> I'm gonna share with you guys another uh, acquisition. This is my most recent acquisition. Seems like I've been doing this a lot lately. People always ask me like, does handling all these knives and making all this knife content do you ever get bored of knives? I guess not. <laughs> I mean, uh, like, I you would think, right? I keep finding stuff that I'm interested in. I've been circling this one for a while uh, after my last Shirogorov acquisition. I'm sure you can see here we have a Shirogorov. Very excited about this. I've actually already unboxed it, and that's because I wanted to show it off in the most recent live stream this last weekend. But I know not everybody watches the live stream, so I wanted to do a reveal in the form of an upload uh, here on the uh, on the channel for everybody else. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down in the description. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right, so what we've got here is another Shirogorov. I don't know if I did the best job wrapping that back up, um, but... Uh, yeah, we've got uh, we've got a pretty sweet one here. So this is the Shirogorov F3 NS, and uh, yeah, I uh, this this was one that I I'd been watching for a while. Um, there there there's some other ones, and by the way, where did I get this? I got this at Recon One. Um, they are awesome. I have no program set up with them. I don't. They have. I doubt they even know who I am. Um, they, I just, that's where I go when I'm looking for a Shirogorov because they seem to get a steady supply of them. They are expensive. If you're not familiar with Shirogorov knives, wow, they are expensive, but rightfully so. If you're familiar with Shirogorov knives, then you know that they have some of the most excellent machine work of, um, you know, just a lot of people would argue the most excellent machine work of any knife, uh, company in existence. Uh, this is multi-row bearings extremely premium carbon fiber. I found out um, talking with jo Dr. Frunky and Levon, who absolutely, Levon from the Knife Nuts podcast, uh, who they, they had a huge influence on this purchase and my interest in Shirogorov knives in general. Um, I found out that this is carbon plate, which is basically an extreme, it's a brand of carbon fiber, an extremely premium brand of carbon fiber. I'll let you guys take a look at this. This is contoured and textured carbon plate. Beautiful. The main reason I wanted this, and there are less expensive versions of this knife. There's a um, L-Max and single row bearing system version of this knife, um, which I'm sure is great, but uh, both Levon and Dr. Frunky said, spend the extra money, go with the multi-row bearings and the carbon fiber with M390. That's what this is. I'll let you guys take a look at the card. Um, they said, you won't, um, you won't be disappointed. And wow, they were right. Um, this is fantastic. The, the main reason I wanted to go with this is because, not that I'm like really big into carbon fiber, but it's a titanium liner lock. And yes, it does have a steel lock bar insert. You can just barely see it in there. I've said this many times. I've come to prefer a more robust liner lock over a frame lock um, on lots of stuff because I like being able to put my hands wherever I want on the other side when I'm flipping it. It makes it that much more enjoyable to manipulate because you're not having to worry about an exposed frame lock, right? You don't have to worry about accidentally putting pressure on the lock bar. You can put your hands wherever you want. Same thing while you're holding it, gripping it, using it, whatever. Now, a lot of people are going to be quick to point out, you're probably not going to use that, right? I don't know. Probably not. I've got, a, I've got two Shirogorov uh, knives now. This is expensive. This is a $900 knife. but. It's really easy, like handling this versus other knives that are using, again, you know, you can get knives in carbon fiber, titanium, and M390 for 200, 250 bucks, maybe even less sometimes, right? Do they take the same form as a Shirogorov? Absolutely not. This is next level. There is a, uh, look, look at this. This is absolutely insane. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are gonna ask me, do you like that more than your Quantum? The Quantum is full titanium exposed frame lock. It's also M390 running on multi-row bearings. It's a different design. This is classic Shirogorov to me. I'll get the Quantum out here real quick. Quantum's actually more expensive. 
The F3 has that classic Shogaroff look, and the Quantum, I believe it had, there, it was a collaboration with another designer as well, but the F3 has that classic Shogaroff look. And uh, that's what I was going for. It's also a little bit more robust in the handle, which is something that I appreciate. I'm a big fan of um, contouring on the scales, big fan of texturing, which we absolutely have. And it's also ever so slightly shadow boxed by the titanium liners. Still all of the um, amazing Shogaroff machine work. You can see there the pocket clip, just beautiful. I love the finish on the blade. Oh my gosh, that is just gorgeous. The, the finish on the blade is extremely similar, if not identical to on uh, the finish on my um, Quantum. It also has that detent ball ramp, so there's no, there's no double clutch at all. Right here, it's transitioning. The detent ball is gliding over that ramp up onto the face of the blade, making it probably the easiest, like the most comfortable to, I, there, I, I, I honestly think an infinite amount of time could pass before my hands get tired flipping this. It's simple. Flipper, liner lock, but this was executed as perfectly as you could ever want. That flipper tab is shaped beautifully. The landing zone is perfect. A lot of people want to ask, can you touch the blade right there? No, it's just buried enough. Just buried enough. Inside, milled out, right? If you guys want to know the weight on this guy, I'll let you guys take a look here real quick. Just do some quick specs. Obviously, I will do a full review on this knife. So you guys can get my complete thoughts, but I, I'm so happy with it right now. 4.83 ounces, right? If you're a ratio snob, it's not absolutely perfect, but it is impressive considering it's a pretty big knife. I like my full size knives. This is actually a little bit larger than I prefer to carry, but it's so light for what you're getting here. We're looking at 8.75 inches overall with nearly, I mean, in some places you could measure it as a four inch blade and my measurements here, oh my gosh. I mean, the website doesn't say this, but it's like 3.9 inches of cutting edge. Absolutely ridiculous blade to handle ratio. It's so good. Perfect centering, absolutely dead on centering. Lock up, nice and early, solid though. A lot of people are gonna say that's too early. No, it's solid. Shirogroff knives are from you know what I've come to find out here lately, and I've handled a few. These aren't the only two that I've ever handled. And I came to decide to purchase these after having handled multiple on the channel. And I realized, you know, for the longest time, my comfort zone was for about four to 800. I was finding out that the knives that I liked and getting that feeling of corresponding happiness for the money that I was spending after having climbed the ladder over the last decade. I went through the budget knife phase. I went through the, you know, production, the Spyderco Benchmade ZT. I still like those knives. I'm not saying I'm swearing them off. I still buy budget knives and Benchmade Spyderco ZT knives, right? And I kind of graduated up a little bit higher, went through the Microtech and automatic stuff, kind of parked on hinderers, right? It's been really difficult for me to go higher and get the same feeling of of like I am definitely feeling what I spent on the knife, right? I've handled a lot of knives that are seven, eight, nine hundred, a thousand, eleven hundred, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, two thousand, four thousand. I've handled a lot of that stuff and it's really impressive, right? But my thing is, is if I'm gonna spend that much money on a knife for me, if I'm gonna keep it, it really has to be something, it has to bring me that level of happiness. And Shura Garovs are some of the first to really drive the nail in the coffin for me. I love my Quantum, I do. Um, I, and I will, I will be keeping it. I, I'm sure people are going to ask, you want to sell it? No, I'm going to keep it because I still love it. But just first impressions. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, can you tell me right now, like, which is better? It's hard to say because I'm, I'm, I'm in that new knife acquisition euphoria phase, right? I need that to wear off before I can do a full review on it. But in this moment, yeah. I think I absolutely prefer this one. This just fills the hand a little bit better. This is one of the most comfortable knives I've ever handled. I mean, you can tell you don't need to, I mean, you don't have to take my word for it. I mean, a lot of people can look at this and go, yeah, that looks like it would be ridiculously comfortable because of the way that they shaped the pocket clip. It's just beautiful. I love how they did the backspacer. I love how they did the jimping up here. It's just beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful. This knife is, it's, it's an alternate form of perfection. And uh, I'm really happy with that. I think there might still be a couple there. Uh, first impressions on this, yeah. I'm gonna spend 900 bucks on a knife. There are $700 variants of this. Like I said, they're not multi-row bearing, they're not carbon fiber, and they're not M390. They're single row. Micarta, I think, or maybe G10, and LMAX, which is fine. But man, if you're gonna spend 900 bucks on a knife, it's really hard to argue. I mean, there's a lot of people watching going, I would never spend 900 bucks on a knife. That's fine, but I'm not really talking to you. The people out there who are considering spending that much on a knife, what's gonna bring you that happiness? And this is number two Shiro Groff, and I've been happy twice now. These are excellent. I'm sure there's gonna be Shiro Groff owners, very happy Shiro Groff owners down in the comment sections. Uh, mimicking what I'm saying or repeating what I'm saying. Yeah, these are the real deal. Holy moly. This is cool. Like I said, uh, even though this is a 11 minute video, which is how long a review honestly should be, <laughs> um, this is just an unboxing. I'm just sharing this with you guys right now. I will do a full comprehensive review. I've got a lot of stuff to review, so don't be surprised if you don't see this one pop back up for a month or so, but yes, extremely happy with it. It is flawless. I've combed over it, had it for a few days now. Not a single flaw. Exactly what I expect from Shiro Um Check out Recon One. They've got an awesome website. Guys, that's gonna be pretty much it for today. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on the Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.